one of the big conversations in the health and wellness space right now is metabolic health and that journey all the way from what most people term, term insulin resistance all the way to diabetes and beyond. You're not a fan of that term insulin resistance. Talk about how you feel about that. And is that just a naming thing or do you agree with the physiology changes that happen as a person is headed down that path? Right. Okay. There is nuance here and it's important that people hear what I am saying and don't make up something else that I'm not saying. So listen to me very carefully, people. Insulin resistance in the way that it's couched and the inference of the very term insulin resistance and in the assumption by virtue of there being no statement to the contrary is a fallacy. It's a construct. It's an idea that's been put together. Strictly speaking, is the body in some way resisting the normal function of insulin when someone is insulin resistant? Yes. Absolutely. However, when a person says someone is insulin resistant or they have insulin resistance, the implication, the assumption is that that is a pathological state of being. That is a state of being that will cause you to have a disease process of some kind. Specifically, the disease process that they claim is due to and caused by insulin resistance is an elevation in your blood glucose at rest chronically. Get your blood, your resting blood glucose over a certain threshold level, and the decision is made to diagnose you as being type 2 diabetic. Period. That's all it is. So, what is type 2 diabetes? It is elevated blood glucose, nothing else. Now, when someone's body is not responding to insulin in the way that it normally does or should do, we'll get to that in a minute. That means anytime you consume any amount of carbohydrate, that carbohydrate is more likely to end up pooling in your blood, leading to elevated blood glucose. So that's why they say insulin resistance is the underpinning cause of diabetes, to which I say absolute rubbish. It's nothing of the sort. The cause of diabetes, elevated blood glucose, is pouring things down your stupid neck that readily turn into glucose, i.e., all carbohydrates. You can be as insulin resistant as you like, and if you consume no carbohydrate whatsoever, you will not have elevated blood glucose, ergo you will not be diagnosed as diabetic, because diabetes is elevated blood glucose, nothing whatever to do with insulin. The insulin action that's going on is quite separate from that, although it has an effect when you eat carbohydrates unnecessarily, sure. The insulin resistance is in fact not a pathology. It is an adaptive metabolic adjustment optimizing the body to run on the fats that it has stored and available and ready for use. A cell that has locked its doors to the intake of glucose does so precisely because that cell is full of energy. It is replete with usually a droplet of fat. And that fat will last that cell for quite some time. It needs no further energy input at all. And in fact, if the glucose were allowed to pour into that cell according to its concentration gradient in the blood, then the internal workings, the organelles, the, the proteins and things within that cell would become destroyed, as would that cell then become destroyed. So this insulin resistance is not a pathology at all. It is a self protective mechanism protecting that cell from destruction by glucose. Ergo, the red blood cells and the epithelial cells of the, of the vasculature become the, the sacrificial lambs in that case. Luckily, the physiological ability to replace those cells with brand new ones is vastly, vastly more attuned and more rapid than having to replace, say, a muscle cell that you've destroyed from sugar. 
or a heart cell that you've destroyed from sugar or whatever. So that's why your body is doing insulin resistance, because it does not require glucose. Remember, if circling right back to the very beginning, the exact requirement in human physiology in the diet for external exogenous carbohydrates is not one gram ever, zero. So frankly, I couldn't give a rip what someone's insulin status is. Um, I work with people's physiology the way that it's running when, when we get it running optimally, which is to run on fat and not sugar. And then the body will produce as much sugar as it needs for the brain and the testes and several other tissues that need the glucose. The signaling will be done by the level of ketones in the blood according to the rate of ketos, the ketosis at the time and other second messenger like and hormone systems that all act in concert to maintain a person's homeostasis. Insulin resistance is a normal, natural, indicated and useful biological process. It is not a pathology and it is not the cause of diabetes because Glucose is the only thing that can cause diabetes to become an evidence because that's the way it's diagnosed. That's what it is. And that's the pathology because neither insulin nor fat are toxic in the blood or in the cells at high levels. Sugar is. Okay, talk about how you feel about this period of, say, 10 to 20 years when somebody is becoming metabolically unhealthy before they become type 2 diabetic and testing, say, fasting insulin or using a craft test to see what's happening in that period of time that someone would refer to as insulin resistance to hopefully realize there's a problem, reverse things out, doing the things that we're talking about today, dietary, and hopefully we'll get to other things beyond and finding value in using that term insulin resistance in that case to reverse out before they, you know, cause all kinds of destruction. Okay. My cure, my solution is always the same. Stop eating plants, fibers, carbohydrates, seed oils, manufactured foods, highly processed foods, things with artificial chemicals like food colorings and preservatives and things in them, stop doing that slowly over six to eight weeks. Once you've been doing that for six to eight weeks, here is the ongoing prescription. Keep not eating those things. Then you will not have a problem with your blood glucose and your insulin levels become completely irrelevant because... Diabetes and all its sequelae are caused by elevated blood glucose, not insulin. Okay? And actually, the longer you're on a diet devoid of carbohydrates, the less your insulin activity response is, the less insulin you'll produce. And in fact, the more what they call metabolically flexible you'll become. Actually, you will be able to cope with occasional boluses of carbohydrates better. There is no value or utility in checking someone's insulin resistance status and saying that's of use to us in any way, unless that person is determined that they will not be changing their diet, they will continue to eat the same way. In which case you could say, well, this is clear indication that your body doesn't like that. It's setting you up for a problem if you don't change your behavior. And the behavior you need to change is the one that tells you you should eat plant material, carbohydrates, fibers, seed oils, and all that shit. Excuse my French. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Insulin resistance is a normal, natural, indicated, and useful biological process. It is not a pathology, and it is not the cause of diabetes. The diet that these so-called scientists